This video is a collaboration with Beef. It's What's for Dinner on behalf of the Beef Checkoff. So we all know everybody's stuck at home, quarantining. We're about a month or so into the process. It's getting tiring, but if you're like me, you're staying in the kitchen and cooking. And we all probably have freezers packed with food. I know mine's packed with a lot of ground beef. And that's why today I'm happy to announce I'm partnering with Beef. It's what's for dinner on behalf of the Beef Checkoff to share with you guys a new recipe to prepare beef using simple pantry items that Hopefully most of you guys have lying around in your kitchens. And that recipe is gonna be a Bami smash burger. Smash burgers are all the rage. And I actually used to sell Bami sandwiches alongside the grilled cheese truck as a concept that worked inside of tents. So whenever we did a street fair or something, we could set up a tent and we had this sort of concept of Bami sandwiches. So I love burgers, I love Bami sandwiches. You can pack in lots of vegetables in a banh mi and the flavor is really fresh and light and it can turn something that has been in your freezer like some of this ground beef that we're gonna use and make it just really nice and fresh and delicious. So let's just jump right into it. It all starts off with frozen ground beef and there is a method for defrosting ground beef fairly quickly in the microwave. There's a nice graphic that I'll link down below to sort of show how you might quickly defrost ground beef but for me the best way to defrost anything is to give it time and let it slowly thaw in the refrigerator. And one day usually isn't enough. This isn't a lot of meat, this is about a pound of ground chuck. And I gave this two days to defrost. So this all started two days ago. I took it out of my freezer. I put it on a plate just in case anything leaks out. And I let this just sit in the refrigerator for two days and now it's perfect. It doesn't really look discolored. It's nice and defrosted. Now when you buy ground beef, there's lots of different fat contents you'll see. You'll see lots of things like 80% lean, 70% lean, 90% lean. You'll also see a lot of things like 80-20, 70-30, 90-10. All of that means is a different sort of proportion of fat to lean meat. So 80-20 means it's 80% lean meat and 20% fat. 70-20 means it's 70% lean meat, 30% fat. That gives you a much juicier end result. But 70% is sort of harder to find. It's something that you might be able to do if you grind your own meat. You can control that fat level. The most common you'll probably find is 80-20. It's like this mid-range fat to lean meat grind. And for me, it's great for burgers. It doesn't shrink too much. It creates a nice juicy burger. And it still gives a lot of texture, which is something that's important in a burger. So let's just get this out of its package, get it portioned into three ounce patties. I'd probably say it's roughly a quarter cup each, if you don't have a scale. So we've got a scale here. We're just gonna roll out three ounce burger patties. Okay, so I've got my burger patty. Next up is this uh, spicy mayo, sriracha mayo. It just consists of mayo, Asian hot sauce. Whatever you can find works. You could use any sort of hot sauce, really. You just combine about a quarter cup of mayo and a few tablespoons of the hot sauce. That should be enough for like one or two portions. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, and then I'm just gonna mix it until all of the hot sauce is fully incorporated into the mayo. Now we've got our condiment. 
You know, the first thing I really should have done is make the pickled vegetables. A classic ingredient in a Vietnamese sandwich is pickled cucumber and daikon. Daikon is like a big radish. It sort of looks like a carrot, but it's a bit harder to find. Carrots are pretty accessible. And jalapeno is also in a banh mi. And what I'm gonna just do is, instead of using the daikon, I'm gonna pickle the carrot and the jalapeno together. And we're just gonna make it like a really quick pickle. We're not even gonna boil anything. We're gonna cut these small enough that they're gonna kind of pick up that flavor and pickle in a relatively short amount of time, maybe like 30 minutes. So let me show you how to do that. I'm just, I'm gonna cut the jalapeno into slices and then you can grate these on a box grater or in like a food processor, but I like them longer strands. I'm gonna cut them by hand and cut them into very thin julienne slices. So I'll show you how to do that. Square off the carrots so that they can just lie flat and then begin to cut planks as thin as you can across the carrot. Then stack them up into short piles and then cut as thin as you can to form julienne slices. Make sure you're pushing the knife forward and not down so that you can easily make these cuts. Adding salt now is gonna sort of help them start to break down and move this process along a little bit faster. Now I'm just gonna do this by eye because I know how much vegetable I have. And then all I'm really looking for is a real balance, right? I'm gonna add vinegar, sugar, salt, and water. And I want them all to taste very smooth and balanced. If it tastes too sweet or too vinegary or acidic or too weak, then I can adjust these things as I go. So this isn't really like a preserving pickle, this is just like a flavoring pickle. And so I'm just gonna add this white vinegar, maybe a half cup. And then I'm gonna grow about three tablespoons of sugar. And then I'm gonna mix that up. Yeah, that tastes good. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of warm water and that warm water is gonna sort of help dissolve that sugar a little bit. You'll be able to see if the sugar's dissolved, kind of like in your coffee in the morning, if you could see a little bit left over in your spoon. If you don't see any more, then you know it's completely dissolved and uh, you got a nice little brine. Let's give it a taste. I'm gonna add a touch of salt. Now, of course, you don't need to add jalapeno to this at all. I actually like it, it's part of the dish, but if you're not into the spice, even though it shouldn't be spicy once pickled, then you can just omit it, totally fine. But now we have that. That's a huge portion of this dish. We need to do one more thing and we're ready to start cooking. We gotta cut the cucumber. And essentially I just take uh, a, a kind of piece of cucumber, roughly the size of whatever bun I'm gonna use, and I'm just gonna cut it down into planks, just like this. And then you got these nice planks of cucumber. That's very classic. So here everything is. What's crazy is just in its raw form, it smells exactly like the sandwiches we used to make. It brings back those smells. It's very distinctive. And even before making it, you can almost taste it by smelling it and just know it's gonna be delicious. So I'm excited. What we're gonna do is only take over to the stove what we need, which is our bun and our patties. We're gonna sort of leave the rest of our ingredients here so we can assemble it once the burger is done. So we got our patty. I'm gonna toast the bun first in the pan. And what I'm gonna do is take this patty, put it into a hot, hot cast iron pan. I'm really gonna let that heat up on medium to medium high heat for a good long while and make sure it's really hot. The reason we have this in a ball is because we're gonna get it straight into the pan, no fat. That 80-20 beef 
the fat content in this beef is going to be enough to fry the burger patty in the pan without any oil and create a really nice crust. And what we're gonna do is I, I kind of don't have parchment paper with me, but if you have it, you would put parchment paper over it. And with a spatula or like a small pot, we're just going to smash this burger into the pan until it's nice and thin. And that's just gonna create a nice caramelization. We're gonna cook it through to about 160 degrees, make sure it's fully cooked. A few minutes on each side is gonna cook this burger and nice and juicy because we do have enough fat content in there. It, I wouldn't recommend using a leaner ground beef here or else it's gonna taste a little bland. So having the right amount of fat content is kind of important for this recipe. So let's just jump right into it. Get a cast iron pan on medium high heat and let that preheat really well. Once it's preheated, toast the burger buns. Once they're nice and toasty, get them out of the pan and then add the ball of ground beef with a spatula. Immediately smash that into the pan as hard as you can. Then go around and smush the edges into the pan as well. Season it with salt and then let that just cook for about two minutes and develop a really nice sear. Essentially frying the burger in its own fat. That's why the fat content of the ground beef is important in this recipe. Once you can see a crust has developed, Use a metal spatula and sort of scrape underneath the burger. And then once it releases, give it a flip. Season it with salt and then cook it on that side for an additional one minute. The total cook time of this burger is three to four minutes tops, if you've got high enough heat. Once it's cooked through, then we're gonna get this out of the pan and transfer it over to the board where we can assemble the burger. So now I'm going to assemble the burger. I'm really happy with how it came out. I want to make sure I put a lot of love and care and attention into the assembly so that it doesn't all fall apart when I take a bite into it. This is the most important part of a sandwich. Always pay careful attention to the assembly of a burger or a sandwich whenever you make one. So the strategy here is I'm gonna put a little bit of the mayo on the bottom bun, then cucumber, then the patty, then the carrots and jalapeno. I'm gonna drain that out real nice so it's not all wet on the patty. Then a little bit of cilantro, another round of the mayo, and then close it up and we're ready to go. That's mighty good. You see how everything's staying together? There's a, a method to the madness, and it's thought through. You get crunch from the cucumber and the, the pickled carrots. There's spice, but it's not too overwhelming, even though we've got a lot of jalapeno in there. The smell is nostalgic to me. It's sort of everything that I look for in a bami sandwich, just in a burger. And we use it, this beautiful ground beef that was frozen, but it performed just like fresh ground beef. And because you're using a rich, fatty piece of burger patty, this pickling is a nice kind of acidity that cuts through the richness and the fattiness. So there is balance within the entire burger. And that's what makes bami delicious. For more recipes and inspiration, visit beef, it's whatsfordinner.com in the link down in the description and give a bami burger a shot. The secret behind that recipe is I developed that maybe 11 years ago. I haven't made it in the longest time and it was the perfect recipe I thought to share for this collaboration. So I'm really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching. Thanks to all my patrons. Thanks for beef, it's what's for dinner. Appreciate everyone and all the support. That's all that I've got today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.